Hey guys, Rafa from GC Power Audio Systems here. Today we're going to look into one of the biggest sources of confusion in all of Power Audio. What all the knobs and switches on your amplifier actually do. So whether you have a monoblock amplifier powering your subwoofer, a four channel amplifier powering your mids and highs, or like this big boy right here, a five channel amplifier powering your entire car sound system. Today we're going to help you demystify what each of these controls and switches actually does, how they affect your sound, and most importantly, how to set them in a way that gets the most out of your car sound system. Let's begin with the monoblock amplifier. So this is our JC1200.1 monoblock amplifier. And you'll find a couple of key controls here. So first we have gain. Then we have phase, then the subsonic filter, the bass boost, and then the low pass filter, okay? And let's start with the gain, okay? First things first, let's, and let me clarify this from the very beginning. The gain, is not a volume knob okay one more time this is not a volume knob it doesn't control how loud your sound system sounds it controls how sensitive the amplifier is to the signal coming from your head unit okay more specifically if you turn the gain higher the amp reaches full power at a lower volume level on your head unit okay and if you turn it if you turn the gain lower it takes more volume for your head unit to get to get there you know so here's an example let's say your radio volume goes from zero to twenty with high gain, your sub might reach full output by volume 9. With low gain, you may not even hit full output until volume 17. And that's why people confuse it with volume. But it's really just about signal matching. Now, another key factor is your head unit's RCA output voltage. A higher output head unit with, like, let's say, 4 or 5 volt RCA outputs will require less gain, while a lower output head unit, one with, let's say, 2 volt RCA outputs, will require more gain to compensate. And setting the gain too high can introduce distortion or clipping and setting it too low on the other hand won't allow the full you know won't allow you to use the full potential of your amplifier's power and there's a few ways of setting the gain correctly you could do it by ear you can use a multimeter a distortion detector like the smd dd-1 or an oscilloscope which shows an actual visual representation of the waveform and it starts showing you when it actually starts distorting and the method you use honestly is going to depend on your tools but regardless, remember, gain is sensitivity, not volume. Next up is phase. This switch lets you flip the polarity of your subwoofer between 0 and 180 degrees. So in simple terms, it controls the direction that your subwoofer cone starts moving in. So at 0 degrees, it pushes forward or outward and then back inward during the beat. And at 180 degrees, it pushes inward first, then outward. And why does this matter, okay? Why does this matter? Because if your subwoofer is out of phase with your door speakers, they might cancel each other out. And basically, that causes weak or muddy bass, especially if you're near the crossover point. So to test this, play a bass-heavy track and flip the polarity switch and go with whichever setting sounds tighter and more powerful. And when I mean polarity switch, the phase switch is the same thing, okay? Next, let's talk about the subsonic filter. So the subsonic filter is basically a high-pass filter for your subwoofer. And what is a high-pass filter? It's a, fil it's a filter in which the cutoff frequency, so whatever you choose between 10 hertz and 50 hertz, only frequencies above that, higher than that, hence high pass, are allowed to pass through. So it blocks ultra low frequencies that your subwoofer cannot reproduce effectively, okay? And even though your subwoofer might be rated, let's say to play from 35 hertz and on, the cone will still try to respond to signals below that, and it just won't make any real sound. But this will still cause the cone to have a necessary movement. It's going to cause a buildup of heat, less control, and in some cases, even damage. And this is especially true in ported enclosures, okay? So ported enclosures lose control below their tuning frequency. So if your box is tuned to 32 hertz, you want to test, you want to set your subsonic filter at around 20 to 30 hertz. And sealed boxes are naturally better controlling cone movements, so it's less critical there, but still helpful. And you'll want to usually set this between 20 and 35 hertz, depending on your box. So the bass boost is a knob that increases output around a very specific frequency, usually centered at around 45 hertz. And it's important for you to know that this is not a wide boost, okay? This is a narrow EQ spike. Put too much stress, and it can cause your subwoofer to sound bloated or sloppy. In fact, three decibels is actually requires twice the power than having bass boost at nothing, then six decibels requires requires four times the power and 12 decibels requires 16 times the power so if your amp is already at its limit 
adding a six decibel boost will cause you to click. Or worse, it can even blow your sub if you don't fix this or don't notice this. You may also notice a loss in bass definition, meaning that the sub starts to sound mushy, less tight, less articulate, you know? It's start, it starts sounding muddier. And if you find yourself having to turn the bass boost too much to get the output that you desire, honestly, it's better. It's probably time for you to upgrade to a bigger, more powerful amp and sub combo. Next, let's talk about the low pass filter. So a low pass filter in itself tells your amplifier where to stop. And by that, I mean where to stop in terms of frequency. It cuts off all the frequencies that are above whatever cutoff point you select between 50 to 250 hertz, okay? So it cuts off all frequencies above a certain point, so only deep bass goes to your sub. Here's the key. You want the low pass filter on your sub amp to match the high pass filter on your four channel amp so that your sub plays everything below the cutoff point and your mids and highs, your door speakers and your tweeters play everything else. They fill the rest of the void and that creates a clean seamless crossover between your sub and the rest of your sound system. So for example, if your mids are high pass at 110 Hertz, then your subs LPF, your low pass filter should also be set at 110 Hertz. Now let's talk about four channel amps. These are perfect for powering mids, highs, or a pair of components front and rear. Unlike monoblocks, these amps have independent controls for the front and the rear speakers. You also find a crossover frequency switch, and it lets you switch between high pass filter, full range, and low pass filter. You also have a frequency dial to set the cutoff point for the high pass or the low pass filter. If you set it to rear, it's not going to do anything because you're sending the entire frequency spectrum, right? And then you have the sensitivity knob, which, like I said earlier, gain equals sensitivity. So some amps will say sense like for, or sens sensitivity. Others will say gain. And finally, we have the input switch. So you notice we have two modes, right? We have four-channel mode and we have two-channel mode. So in four-channel mode, you'll have independent controls for the front and the rear speakers. In two-channel mode, the power of all four channels will be in combined into two, and you'll typically only use one of these, right? And this is useful if you're trying to power very demanding mid-range speakers, especially for loud SPL setups, or even small subwoofers. If you're trying to drive like a small subwoofer, you would set the low pass filter like a monoblock amp, and then just run it in two-channel bridge mode. And finally, just for demonstration's sake, we have a five-channel amplifier here, our RX 3000.5 five-channel amp. So you notice we basically have all of them, all of the controls together here, right? We have for the four-channel section independent controls for channels one and two, for channels three and four, and then we have the controls for the monoblock section. And you notice the same familiar controls. We have gain, low pass filter, high pass filter, and different crossover mode between low pass filter, full range, and high pass filter for the four channel modes. And for the sub channel, we have a low pass filter, bass boost, subsonic filter, phase switch, and gain. Now we're done showing you what all the controls do on a monoblock amp, on a four channel amp, or on a five channel amplifier, I'm gonna quickly switch to a screen recording of a special software I use so that you can see what all these controls do in real time to the audio signal that your amplifier is sending to your speakers or your subwoofer. Now I want to show you real quick a visual representation of how some of these controls, in particular the low pass and the high pass filters, as well as the bass boost, how they affect the sound, the signal, that the amplifier is sending to the, sub the subwoofer or to the speakers, right? So let's start with the subwoofer. <clears throat> Typically, so actually let me tell you what you're seeing right now. So this right here is just a, it's a graphic EQ. And what I like about this software right here, this is actually part of a audio production software called Logic Pro, but we're not talking about audio production, right? I'm just, I just wanted to use it so that you can see a representation of all the frequencies that we can hear. And what I'm gonna play right now is white noise, which is, well, every frequency played together. You're not gonna physically hear it, but as you can see right here, you can actually see a representation of it. And this right here, the X axis, is the entire frequency spectrum that humans can hear. 20 hertz is the deepest we can hear, all the way to 20,000 hertz, 20 kilohertz. That's what we can, that's the highest we can hear. Now, for the subwoofer, typically the subwoofer's gonna be playing sounds in the, sub bass and the and a little bit of the mid bass frequency spectrum the sub bass typically from 20 hertz to 60 hertz mid bass can range from 60 hertz all the way to 250 hertz 
and right now we're going to focus with the subwoofer we're going to set the cutoff point for the low pass filter at 120. in this example let's pretend our door speakers are at the lowest 100 hertz but just to protect them to make sure they don't they can handle high power we're going to set the high pass for them at 120 hertz as well so i already set it right here the, the frequency so let me turn it on just so you can see pay attention to what happens to the entire reading right here you see that let me turn it back off see what happens to everything past this line right here 120 hertz somewhere around here from here to the right you see that it's falling and now it's gone so basically what happens with the low pass filter is that all the frequencies below this cutoff point 120 hertz are allowed to pass hence the word the name low pass all the frequencies above it start getting diminished rather rapidly in terms of volume right like there's a steep slope and this is going to help us have a very clean base that is in harmony with the rest of our system assuming we have placed the low pass and the high pass filters on the four channel amp and the sub and the monoblock amp at the same crossover point now let's also do this for the high pass filter so now for the four channel amp we were set it right here at 120 hertz right the subwoofer is taking care of all these frequencies right here we want the four channel app to handle the frequencies that are gone here so all the other frequencies so let's do this and look at that all the frequencies behind this cutoff point have been turned down so let's see the entire frequency spectrum again let's activate the high pass filter and it's gone so now going back to the low pass filter too we're visualizing right now the audio signal that a monoblock amp is sending to our subwoofer right now what's the bass boost do the bass boost when you activate it right now it's a, it's not doing anything right it's i have it set at zero decibels which is basically off what the bass boost does it's something called the bell curve which you'll see what happens when i start turning it up so first a very low value like half a decibel basically Notice how it looks like everything went up a bit, except for the extreme edges. But it's a very gradual slope. But as I start increasing it more, remember when I show you the JC1200, it had a range from 0 to 12 decibel bass boost. As we start getting closer to 12 decibels, notice how it becomes steeper. It becomes less evenly distributed in terms of the boost to the, all the frequencies the subwoofer is covering. And this is only at 3 decibels. So we go to a more extreme example which let's say all the way to 12 which would already if you already set your gain correctly and then you just add 12 decibels 12 decibels of boost you're probably going to damage your sub and yeah you're overdriving your amp you're asking it to output so much more power than it already is but even then just look at this it's a very thin slope here very very unnatural slope here at the top right and that's what also ca causes the muddiness the dirtiness in the way it sounds. It doesn't sound as clean as when we have it at zero, right? So yeah, I just wanted to show you what this did. And if we add, if, if we also want to visualize what the subsonic filter does, remember it's also a high pass. The only thing is we would have it set, let's say at 30 Hertz. And this is essentially what we, we would be sending to the subwoofer. So without it, this is what we have. With a subsonic filter on we're just carving off that deep bass that the subwoofer cannot reproduce effectively and therefore we're redu reducing the strain we have less heat overall it's good for the sub it will help it last a lot longer and it's just going to give you a better sound and yeah that's pretty much it in terms of visualization and that's a full breakdown of how to understand and tune your car's amplifier we went through things like gain filters, crossover settings, input controls, and phase. And we even went through a whole visualization of how all these settings and controls affect the signal going from your amp to your speakers or your subwoofers. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on social media like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And one more thing, if you're ever confused as to what any of these controls actually do still, please, please, please 
reach out and consult a professional car audio installer. Thanks for watching, and remember, loud feels good, but only when it's done right.